think about it. the Lord. Yeah, if you turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 4. Amen. Again, read it. Verse Thank you. 1. We're going to endeavor to conclude a series that God laid on our hearts regarding the attributes of the redeemed of all ages. Tonight we're going to bring it to a close and show the effects and outcomes and the glory that follows individuals and congregations that have these attributes. We will endeavor to do a brief recap on the four attributes as we go into the close crescendo. All right, Revelation 4, verse 1. After this, uh -huh. I looked, Yes. and behold, a door was opened in heaven, mm -hmm. and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with you. There's nothing like when God speaks to you. This is the Apostle John here on the Isle of Potman for the gospel's sake. Anytime you preach the full gospel, you will get ostracized. You will get persecuted. You will not be popular. People will, uh, the Bible speaks about the people wanting an easy way. And anytime you preach the full gospel, you stand for the full gospel, at your job, in your home, wherever it is, whenever you stand for the full gospel, be it known, you will face persecution. Amen? But one of the good things about it is, the more persecution that you face for the gospel, the more God will talk to you. <laughs> I'm not saying the more he'll talk to your, your preacher, your mother, your father. Listen, let me encourage you tonight. The more you stand for the truth, the more you stand on the promises of God, the more you stand on the integrity of the doctrine and standards of the church of God, the more God will speak to you personally. The more God will encourage you personally. The more God will visit you. That's why many times people actually grow more when they're going through the most. Amen? When you're going through the most, you can actually feel a oneness and a connection with God. When you're going through, why? Because you can't rely on this or that. God must bring you himself through it. So he's got to talk with you. he got to let you know you're on the right track. Just keep on doing what you're doing. It's okay. We be may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It won't always be this way. If you end up confused in one of those states, God will make it very clear to you where you don't have to be confused. I'll let you know, you stand for the same thing the brethren stood for. Now, you're not alone in this. Amen. You think you're all alone and God will show you. I got 5,000 saints that have not bowed. Amen. You're just perpetuating that which the saints have already stood for. You're not coming up with nothing new. This is what Jesus gave his life for. This is what the apostles gave their life for. This is what the saints, amen, have held on to throughout the dark and the cloudy day. Amen. Throughout the time of gross darkness. Amen. The saints have always stood on all the light that they had. That's why John, amen, Jesus told John, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What? I'm always going to have a people, amen, that stand in. It may not be a whole bunch of them, but I always have a remnant that will stand. Amen. So here John was on the aisle for the gospel's sake, and here it said, I heard a voice speaking to me, and it was clear. It was and ambiguous. It was clear as a trumpet. Let me know what to do. Now skip down to verse number 7. And here he gives My God. an overview of the redeemed. Come on and read. And the first beast was like a lion. And the first beast or the first living creature, the redeemed of all ages, come on, was like a lion. Was like a lion. And the second beast uh -huh. like a calf. And the second like a calf. And the third beast uh -huh. had a face as a man. Uh-huh. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. So here each one of these was depicted by these animals. And you know that in the prophecy, the Bible said he sent and signified it in the beginning part of Revelation. And that means he put it in symbol. So you need to look at the essence or the attributes of these things. For instance, let me give you an example. The Bible is filled actually with this Jesus used it quite often. He would say uh, something like, uh, I am the door. He wasn't talking about I'm a door. But if you study what a door is, 
It provides access. Yeah. On this side of the door, you're here, but if you go through the door, you're into something else. Amen. And that's what he was depicting. You're in sin, but I am the door. Hello. On this side of the door, you're bound by sin. But if you're willing to come through the door, amen, amen. you come on the other side, amen. amen, just like it's a total different room, it's a total different experience. Amen. So here, he began to speak about these living creatures and these attributes. And through this series, we went down through them. Let's go over to Ezekiel 1.10, and we'll touch on them and then bring it to the close of the series. Ezekiel 1.10. I'm going to read he speaks here about the living creatures as well. Come on. As for the likeness of their faces, uh -huh. they four had the face of a man. And what he brought out was they four had the face of a man. Each one of them had the attribute of a man. Come on. And the face of a lion. And the face of a lion. On the right side. Uh -huh. And they four had the face of an ox uh -huh. on the left side. Come on. They four also had the face of of an eve. So here we see each aspect. As you look at the complete picture, there was a face this way, that way, that way, and that way. And it represents how each had these attributes. And as we were looking at the powerful Word of God and God letting us know, we can make it. We're going to go through some things and let me just do a quick briefing on the end time. These are the things that the saints are going through at the end time. You're going to go through a period unlike no other period in the history of the church. Because the enemy knows that he has a short time. So he's not holding back nothing. He's unleashing everything he has. The Bible speaks about that. Saying he knows he has a short time. Alright, so we're dealing with the enemy unloading his entire quiver. All right, along with that, we're dealing with a time of lukewarmness. The atmosphere would be a time of lethargicness. If you're going to get something, if you're going to get some fire down in your soul, you almost have to get it yourself. Kind of like the bus stop. You're at a bus stop and it's cold outside. It's, you're near by yourself. It's kind of hard to keep warm. But if it's a whole bunch of people at the bus stop, Inside the little terminal there, the little uh, 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 edifice that they have there, there's a whole bunch of people in there. It's kind of warm. But this end time is not going to be a whole bunch of people standing with you. It's not going to be a whole bunch of people right there with you every step of the way. But you're going to have to have the wherewithal to be independent. We're going to get into that. And we went into that. But you know what's beautiful? At that bus stop, in order, amen, to keep some heat and some fire, you know what you got to do? You got to move around. Thank God. Don't be stagnant, my God. Pray for somebody. Amen. Go witness to somebody. Amen. Go to prayer meeting. Amen. Don't be little. Don't be by. Amen. Be busy for God. Amen. Keep some fire down in your soul by being active for the things of God. So here we're dealing with that. But also the Bible speaks in Revelation about the camp of the saints being surrounded. My God. We're being surrounded on every hand. Every side, the camp of the saints is being surrounded by all type of spirits, oh all type of enemies surrounding the camp on every single side. When you was in war, my Lord, and you looked around and you seen <coughs> something coming this way, it was, man, look at this. How many of them is it? This is a time of war. But if you looked that way and you seen more coming and you turned around and looked that way, and you see more coming. And you turn around and look that way. And you see more coming. That was a time that you had to roll your sleeves up. You ain't running no which way. See, if they're coming this way. You can say, lock this. We're going to go this way. But they're coming that way. In other words, we can't run from nothing. In order to make it, amen, we got to roll our sleeves up every which way. They're attacking our children. Don't want our children to be saved. The world, just worldliness and all type of spirits trying to take their minds from them. They're attacking faith. Don't want us to trust God. Don't want us to believe in the promises of God. He's attacking the standards. Don't want us to hold the standards of God. He wants us to remove the ancient landmark. He wants us to compromise every which way. He's coming with us with unbelief. My God, all the way around. He's coming with compromise. That means, amen, don't fully apostatize, but just change it up a little bit. He's coming with apostasy also. That's, that means change it up, my 
like that and think you're the same. Yeah. Amen. Right. He's come with all of these different oh, ways no. around us. But the Bible said oh, when he does surround us, he said fire going to come down from heaven. Yeah. Praise the Lord yeah. and consume the enemy. Yeah. So here we're dealing with that and we're also dealing with the eight beasts. Each one of these are a series in itself. And unless you got discernment, you won't even perceive what we're dealing with. You'll be confused. Something happened. Listen, nothing will happen without God revealing it. Come on. Nothing significant will happen to the saints. You ain't never got to be confused. Amen. Nothing will happen significant to the saints without God revealing it. That's what the whole scripture is for. That's what prophecy is for. To Amen. equip us to be equipped to battle what we're dealing with. So if there's ever a significant force coming, pay real close attention to the message. Amen. Amen. Because I'm not going to let nothing happen without revealing it to my prophets. Pay real close attention to the word. While you're in the boat, don't rush through it. It'll come out clear answers. You'll see exactly what we're dealing with. You'll see exactly what you're dealing with on your home, in your job. You'll see exactly what you're facing. So here, we're dealing with all these things. And with these attributes, we'll be victorious. With these attributes, we'll, be, we'll have more than enough to be victorious and ride off on a white horse. Prepare and a part of that bride. Think of it like a wedding. A wedding, my God. Praise the Lord. Amen. A wedding, amen. Right. Oh, a wedding, amen. But a wedding, amen. The bride comes down the aisle and she has the beautiful white on. And she, I mean, it's just so, it's, at that moment, you know what? It's amazing, but at that moment, it's like they're glowing. Yes. You may not know what I'm talking about now, but you're, it's like they're glowing. It's like, well, and that's the way the bride is. Amen. When Christ comes back without spot or wrinkle or any say, can you imagine? He's going to have a few four in the middle of the land to see it. That is Amen. as beautiful as the church has ever been. Yes. My Lord, he's going to have amen, a remnant. My God, as he stands there, my Lord waiting. Here comes my bird and come up. Get this up and you right there. Get it come to saints. Yes. My Lord. And Jesus seen the bride coming. And we can be a part of that bride Amen. with these attributes right here. Oh All right. So now it talks about, and we're going to go to verse 11, and that brings us to our close. Before we do, let's just touch real briefly these attributes. My God, my God. We first went over the lion. And the lion denoted three things that we went over. And one was courage over Proverbs. 28, we're not going to these scriptures, but he talked about the lion, and he said, bold as a lion, and we're going to need courage to make it through. Those that have that courage, I think it was Gideon that he came and said, they that are fearful and afraid, let them go home. This battle is going to be too hot for them. We do not need them to get in position. We do not need them to get to a point where we count on them. And they fold up because of the intensity of the battle. So here it said the lion denoted courage. Even Joshua, or God told Joshua when he took over, he said, be of good courage. You're going to have to try it. You're going to have to have courage. And we're going to have to have courage to make it. Those that have courage will make it. Also, the lion subdued his foes, slayed his foes. lion didn't toy with their foes. A lion came and you know, it, it, it speaks about the lion subduing and slaying. Well, here it's talking about being an overcomer, not backing down to any foe. It's not that a lion is actually the strongest lion, not strong as a rhino. The lion's not strong as an elephant. But the lion has something within it that no matter what it's facing, you may sit like, hold on, what? And it represents that, 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 that ability to subdue his foes. And that's a mindset that we're going to have to have an attribute. We don't partner with spirits. The devil will try to get you to partner with spirits. spirit. Some spirit that you got, don't partner with it. Slay it. You grew up and you had an anger. You went off on anybody. Somebody, you, you go off on your teacher. People knew, don't mess with her. Don't you mess with her. Well, as you progress in your experience and God reveals that thing to you, that spirit got to go. That spirit is not conducive to my spirit. That lie, I, I, I'm sorry. Like Brother Hedge was talking about, about lust and spirit. I ain't going to know. I got lust and spirit. It's got to go. 
impatient spirit, whatever it is, it's got to go. Oh I'm going to deal with it. I don't care. I don't care about you, 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 well, 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 y'all can pat me on the back, do whatever. If I have to know, I'm dealing with something that's been a part of me for a long time. I'm going to get before God. I'm going to acknowledge that thing. That thing got to go. That's an attribute that we must have to do it. Play it. It's done. It's gone. It's over with. So here, we talked about not making a pact with a spirit talking about that's my weak point. But Goliath must come down. I love how David to cut his head off after he was down. Also, we talked about the lion having a strong bite. My God. Strong bite. And we went over that. And that just means the Bible speaks about overcoming and in Joel, he talks about the teeth of the lion. But then it talks about overcoming with the word of the testimony. A lot of people, they don't have a strong bite and they won't make it. They will say stuff, but you let a little pressure come. You let a few days come. And the very thing that they said, that's one thing about preachers. That I, 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 I've all, I'm not listening how well you preach that. Do you do what you say and what you preach when it comes to your house? Are you standing on what you preach back in 84? Come on, brother. Are you still standing on that? Do you got real teeth? See, some people, they, 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 they talk a good game, but it, when it comes down to having teeth, see, you can say, you know what, praise God, uh, uh, I, uh, one marriage for life. Or you let your spouse leave. <laughs> you, you let your spouse leave. And you come all up, pray, but you, uh, the redeemed, they got teeth. They said it. I love that song, Sister Linda uh, uh, Greer. It sings, it says, uh, uh, God of the mountains is still God in the valley. Mm -hmm. Things go wrong. Talk you talk of faith. That's it. You talk of faith when you're up on the mountain. Mm -hmm. In other words, when everything is, you feeling real well. I trust God. I guess so. You ain't sick. <laughs> you ain't sitting with your head hurting you. The devil telling you about to have a heartache and then you're in the man of stroke. Oh, and you ever tell a praise the Lord saying, I ain't taking a drop of medicine. You've not had a common cold. <laughs> let, let, me, let, let me see you go through something, amen. But but that face of a, I mean, that attribute of a lion there, a lion, the Bible speaks in Joel says, the teeth of a lion, that just simply means that when you talk it, you get the experience that you live it when it comes time to live it. When you're away from the saints, you got teeth. When you're away from the saints, you don't deviate from your testimony. You got teeth. See, a lot of young people don't understand how to gain confidence and even how the ministry gains confidence in you. Not by what you say, but it's by how your peers view your testimony. See, you can say it at a good game in front of the ministry, but when you're around your peers away on a Friday night when all the young people are together and your carnal is grass, they're not talking about when you was up singing a song crying. They're talking about the fact that you was texting three boys and you ain't made an L meeting with the ministry. You don't, get, you, you don't even know that brother's half saved, flirting and everything else. Have some teeth. No, definitely not. I understand the process. I understand the testimony. I'm not going to be on my job. You ain't taking me to dinner, to lunch. You ain't playing games. You ain't even sending me a, a bucket of roses. You ain't sending me a whole bunch of chocolate. You ain't going to send me Valentine and all that stuff. And I write you back and give you the little things or the little heart text back and this, that, and the other. But, but, but I ain't going but so far. No. The Bible said don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I'm not going to toy with you. The Bible said I'm not going to enter into temptation. A lot of sisters have lost their soul. Right. By playing games, and thinking about I can handle on, this, I can handle this. Five, uh, uh, the Bible said, "Hey man, the brothers do." Because the Bible said, "Can a man handle fire in his bosom?" Playing with girls at the work, talking about how y'all doing. Playing. Don't you get too close to it? I'm telling you. And they ain't saying they ain't. They not saved. Come on. You're pretty connecting with them. Hey, what's going on? I'm just bringing them to Monday night. Let a sister bring them to Monday night. You better quit. Don't play games. You better mind, God, hold on, I gotta have some teeth, amen. amen. So here, the lion had teeth. And we want to have teeth as well to make it. My God. One individual was talking about raising children. And they were saying, you can say a whole bunch of stuff when they're little. But when they get older, and they start telling you they got their own mind. And they want to wear what they want to wear. And they want to go where they want to go. I'm tired of coming to church. Oh, you you shouted loud, preached hard and strong. And it was all about four years old. <laughs> But when they get older, and let me just encourage parents. Parents, hold it. Your children may buck, but they'll respect you. 
Do you know to this day, you let one of my sisters come over our house? She would have a, a skirt or something, this, that, and the other, do whatever. What? I fought it when I was young, but thank you for holding it. Thank you for holding it. So here, this T means more than a notion. Many congregations and many saints have ended up losing their testimony. Why? Because they lacked teeth when it came time to stand. So here lies that teeth. Also, we, talk, we went over the eagle. And I can't go into this. You have to get the CD. But the eagle talked about flying against the wind. The eagle is one of the few birds that can fly against the wind. And the Bible speaks about uh, spiritually progressing or traveling in the midst of difficult times. In Revelation, it talks about Laodicea. So here the eagle is flying against the wind. Many birds fly with it, but the eagle got the power to fly against it. In the midst of all of this, you thrive. In the midst of all confusion, you're still going forth. And we want that. When you have that attribute of an eagle, you're able to fly against the wind. Also, the eagle flew one of the birds that can fly directly into the light of the sun. The Bible speaks about walking in the light. The Bible speaks about the path of the My justice God. and the shining light. And it's a beautiful thing to see a saint get saved and walk in the light. My God. You can actually see it. That's the attribute of an eagle developing in them. First time you see them, they come to church, and they got this, that, and the other, so on and so forth. And then Paul, Brother Hampton said the great one about the face of an eagle. He said, back in the day, to be a, a part of a secret orders, uh, it had great power. If you were part of like a secret society, these were men, lawyers and judges and doctors and presidents. All these powerful men, if you were part of this lodge and this, all those symbols with the moon and the star and all this, if you were part of that, they said you could go up to a train, put up your ring that you were a part of, that train conductor would stop. But a man got saved, and the priest of church of God preached, no, no, we don't have no secret orders. We are leading with God and the word of God. And I know that. And the man said, the church of God don't go for secret orders? This was like having a master's degree or a bachelor or a PhD or something. He said, no, the church got to go for that. The word of God is against that foolishness. Swearing to this, I swear my allegiance, I would die for my brother, I would kill. He said, the church got to go for that? He said, no, I wouldn't go for that. You you won? He said, I was one. Mm -hmm. I got that light. Face of an eagle. Whoa! Face of an eagle. That, that's when you see somebody beginning to develop. You begin to see them come, they get saved, they got a mini skirt on. Thigh sewing, all this stuff on. Knees. Like the, 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 no, Lord. Knees. Knees. Knees sewing, amen. Church of God preacher, amen. Knees sewing, oh, Lord. And, okay, and say, don't ever let any compromising age push you. Common sense will show you modesty. You, you, you ain't got to feel like this and the other because of some compromising age we living in. If you're sitting down, first of all, if it's to your knees, once you sit down, it ain't going to be to your knees no more. We ain't preaching no man's opinion. This is just simple modesty. This is what makes a church shine in the midst of confusion. Come on now. So here when the message goes forth and you see them and they're coming from, they've never been to church. All they knew their whole life is I got to show my body and that's what men give me attention. So I got to have this. I got. But the word of God goes forth and you begin to see them like, whoa. Whoa, we're talking about the basic proper standards. Amen. Whoa, yes. got you. I even, I'm not going to mention their name, but they were involved before they got married. They got saved. They were staying together. They said, no, the word of God. Good for man not to touch a woman. <coughs> we ain't touching each other no more unless we get married. That's man. You see them, the face of an eagle. You walk in the light. Look at that, nobody, and listen, don't you ever go up nobody, hey, you know we don't do, no, let the Holy Ghost work with you. Let them develop the face of an eagle themselves, therefore it's real, it's a part of them, it ain't a part of you or what you see, let them do it. Just simply praise God, because guess what, the Bible said you won't put more on them than they're able to bear. You may go tell them it may be too much for them, they already dealing with this, and this, and this, and here you go, come tell them, hey brother, you don't need that uh, uh, Nike sign in your head, don't you? That brother don't know where he's going to stay at. He's trying to take a stand for his healing. He's dealing with high blood pressure. He's dealing with this. And he'll come dump that on him. But it's just a Nike sign, bro. Come on, man. My goodness. Let the Holy Ghost work with him. Let the Holy Ghost bring him. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 So we want the face of an eagle, but let the Holy Ghost develop that face down in him. Guess why? Because after you out the way, the Holy Ghost will keep working. Amen. Come on now. Amen. There's going to be some stuff that you don't know about. It may be a web page or some a web community that they're part of that's just really pulling their spirit down. But when they develop the face of an eagle for themselves, the Holy Ghost will let them know. See, there's two things that we must actually walk in. That's the Word and the Spirit. The Bible may not
not say some stuff, but the Spirit of God will enlighten them over here. As long as they got the face of an eagle, they'll walk in the Word and they'll walk in the Spirit. All right, so also we talked about the ability to fly above storms. Some situations you don't want to deal with. You don't want to get involved and you don't want to touch. You've got to have the wherewithal to fly above it. Fly above it. And it takes a difficulty. And what? Flying above it? I'm not talking, I don't afraid about that. Many people are getting involved with this. Some just fly above it. Do you ever get married? There's going to be some situations you can raise different. You've got different perspectives. And you're going to want to deal with this. Some stuff, you're going to have to have the wherewithal. Go pray about it. Just fly above it. Let it go. You, oh, you courting? Don't you realize that everybody got opinions about your courtship? Everybody got something to say about your wedding dress, about this, about that, about this. And if you want to allow all this chatter to get you down and get you confused and get you talk and so on and so, fire above that stuff. Fire above that I'm standing before, I'm getting before God. I've got a clear message from God following the counsel of my ministry, this, that, and the other. I'm flying above it. I'm going forward. So the eagle actually has the ability to fly above the storm. Folks, come on, how are you dealing with it? I'm flying above it. You don't even know. It. How are you dealing with it? And pastors, really, if you ever think about being a pastor, woo, you're going to have to have this ability. Instead of all over the place, how you think, you mean you will go around depressed, dejected, uh, uh, ulcers, uh, 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 aneurysms, and everything else. All that, how you, I'm flying. Uh, you ever hear the pastor say this is, this is the famous face of an eagle uh, comment from the pastor. He'll often say, now it'll be one of the biggest situations that you'll be like, because it sinks. Don't be distracted. <laughs> you hear it? I don't know if you ever heard that. Yeah. Basically he said, fly above this foolish and stay on your face before God. It'll make sense after a while. So here the eagle has the ability to fly above it. The eagle also has the ability to renew themselves. Isaiah speaks about this. In the midst of weariness, the ability to renew ourselves. I heard a sister testifying about a renewal. Amen. The eagle also has keen sight over in Hebrews 5, 5th chapter. It's talked about having the ability to discern both good and evil in order to make it through these times. You're going to have to have keen discernment, sharp discernment. Why do I say that? Because we're dealing with a time when the devil is bringing deception. See, deception is when truth, and truth, I'm not talking about like a doctrine truth. I'm talking about even the truth of a matter. It'll be real close. The information you got and the information you're working with, it won't be as just like, you know, sometimes I want to make it clear. Well, we're living in a time where some stuff may not be clear right away. And you're going to have to know how to discern the spirit of a thing. And you're going to have to pick. And see, the Holy Ghost is faithful. He will give you enough if you got discernment to see little stuff. that will let you know, although I'm not clear on this, that right there is off. And I, it is, so therefore, whatever this is, I'm not, I'm, you ain't, I'm not studying this. Because even though this, I may not have all the information to make sense of this, I got enough information and I got discernment to know that's off. That's way off. So whatever else I got to deal with, I can pray through. I'll be patient and God will reveal that to me. But I got discernment. And when you got discernment, you'll discern enough of a matter for you not to get confused. Amen. Amen. All right. Also, we talked about Eagle Swift being able to fly. The Bible speaks about laying aside every weight and flying swift. Over oh, uh, Matthew, it talks about, it said at the end time, it said, I hope you be not with child in that day. And they would travel with children. On their, anything that would slow you down, how serious it is. That's why I certain jobs, hold on, what, I, what type of commitment is this? It's going to slow me down, I'm consecrate. Hold on. Any courtship, any relationship you're going to, it should take you higher. All right, right. See, when you're talking about, well, this, and you're trying to justify something that ain't the perfect will of God, you're going to talk about something that you know that ain't sin. Hey, that ain't the standard, brother. Is that going to slow you down? Amen. That which is of God is going to take you higher. You're going to see growth. Amen. You're going to see more power, more authority, and more glory as a result. So an eagle flies swiftly, and they lay aside every weight that so easily beset them. Also, we talked about the face of a man. And over in Timothy, it talked about the man. It said, lift up holy hands. In other words, the man is a fighter by nature. Oh, God. In order to fight a man, in order to have any success in this time, the Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. You're going to have to have the ability to fight for whatever you get. Fight to have a devotion. Fight, amen, to have a fast. Whatever you have, oh you're going to have to fight for it. To have a good. So if you sit in one service and somebody ain't a fighter and somebody else is, the fighter will be distracted. Like, man, what was that? But the one, that's a, uh, the one that's not a fighter will be like, hold on, I ain't really getting that. I acquired something. But a fighter, 
Yeah, I got the same problems you got. I got bills. I don't feel good. I was tired. I was this, but I fought past all that mess. And I zeroed in and the fire blessed my soul. They praised God. That, ooh, that was so good. That exhortation. My Lord, what? Oh, you, that same thing to put the non-fighter to sleep, amen, encourage the fighter. So you're going to have to have the ability to fight. Amen. Also, we talk about life responsibilities. The Bible speaks about over in Kings when David was leaving to Solomon. He said, show thyself a man. You're going to make it. The economy. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> Challenge you never would. If you're going to make it, you're going to have to have the ability to handle your natural affairs. You're going to have to have the ability to do why? Because your natural affairs can bog you down so much that it'll actually affect your spiritual life. So absolutely been able to handle the natural affairs by the way, today I was coming home. Uh, no, I was coming, going to a meeting this morning in town, and I was leaving. And one of my financial uh, uh, mentors was leaving, and he was—he's a retired man. He just came up to talk. He comes stop up a couple times a week, and I noticed something I never noticed before. He's the one that actually encouraged me to save and this, that, and the other. He was driving his car, and the the lights in the front was duct taped on. <laughs> Ross, I ain't never seen that before. You know Mr. Wilson? I ain't never seen that before. So I'm sitting there, seeing him walk, and I said, this brother got duct tape on his car. Now, mind you, he has enough cash flow to buy any car, just about any, except some exotic super car, whatever, but any car, basic production car in the world, cash, times five. And he's got another car that's way better than this car. But this is the car. I sat there and I said, man, this man got, and you know what, and you know, on the flip side, Sister Kim, as soon as they walk across this stage, they want to go out and buy some car. They got them, they got, it's called subsidized loans. They got unsubsidized loans. They got all this stuff they still got to deal with. Folk walking up to you talking about, I got my associate. All they tell them I got bills. Because I got my back. You got more bills. Oh, I got my, you got more bills. Amen. So here this brother is with all this. But he had, and he taught me, and he said, keep your natural life in order. So when you're praying, you ain't thinking about $425 for this, and this uh, 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 MasterCard is over here, and this stuff. Uh, uh, no. No, I want to keep my natural life together. Also, in the face of a man talking about maturity, when I was a man, I spake as a, when I was a child, I spake as a child. And he's talking about spiritual maturity, about saints eating meat, able to take on the deep things of God. Don't you know if a person not spiritually mature, you can preach something and it'll be offensive to them. They won't sense the battle. I remember I'm reading a song. I can't, I think it's page number two. It's a song in here. And I'm going to tell you, it, 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 I said, how can a saint feel this way? It said, uh... Uh, verse number five. It says, "The prophet's king vision, transpiercing the ages, beheld us to Zion's return. We'll sing of our freedom, though Babylon rages. We'll shout as their city doth burn." I'm like, hey, brother, hold on. Where, where is Christ at? In the these brothers talking about shouting. They weren't talking about the club. They talking about church folk apostatizing. They said, when this gospel burn them up, we going to glory, burn them, burn them, burn them. <laughs> but if you ain't got, but listen, they're not talking about that. They're not talking about the person. Yes. But the spirit behind yes. that thing yes. going to end up having us all disqualified. Yes. Yeah, brother. The devil get in here, my God, he's going to end up changing this and changing that. And before you knew it, you yoked up with the eight beats and don't even know it. Now the church got Anderson right now. They had a Catholic priest up pre, uh, 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 praying for the uh, uh, graduation ceremony. The wow. Anderson, some folks still fellowship in church. And God said fellowship Anderson, so therefore you fellowship in them. They fellowship that church. That church got fellowship in Anderson. Anderson is a part of the World Council of Churches, which is the head of the eight beasts. Yeah. That's why he says we'll shop and don't play with this. Don't toy with it. If you don't want it, go on about your business. But this truth is precious. The Bible said the word of God was precious in those days, and it's precious today. Amen. So the face of a man is spiritual maturity, able to eat meat, because they understand the deeper things. They're not talking about this. 
But they're talking about the spirit behind that thing and what it would do to us. Also, we talked about independence. Spirit, I mean, talk about having, being spiritually independent, not needing people to prop you up, but you got to experience for yourself. It also talked about the calf. The calf denoted two things, and we can't go into them because we're going to get into the end. It denoted sacrifice, and it takes sacrifice to get saved. You've got to repent. In order to truly get saved, saints have to kneel down at the altar. And everything I knew to be wrong, I had to ask God to forgive me for it. And I had to be willing to give it up. Everything I was involved in that was sin, that I knew was sin. And saints, a lot of people don't get a real breakthrough. Yeah, that's true. Because the face of a cat wasn't there. Every, everything that God enlightened, these numbers that I had, involvements that I had, everything that God enlightened me, just why I praise God for my experience and I didn't toy with it because of what it took to get it. Yeah. And you talk about, I'm away to get say, okay, it's going to be more you got to deal with. Oh it's going to be, it's gonna almost kill you. Some stuff will be so much a part of you. It's just what you did when you woke up. It's what you did when you did. It's where you went when you did. It's what you listened to when you worked out. It's what you read when you got done listening to. It's what. If you ain't careful, the longer you wait, your whole life almost will be intertwined with sin. My God. Your whole involvement will be around, revolve around something that wasn't of God. And you got to deal with all that at the altar in, in a moment in order to get a real breakthrough. You got to kneel on that altar and find that face of a calf willing to sacrifice. Lord, I'm done. But all oh, you do, and you develop that face of a man, the glory that comes down and meets you at that moment, you'd rather die than give it up. Oh, the witness so clear, knowing the Bible said, when thy soul, the perfect price is paid, God will speak. The Bible said, also the song said that the Bible said, his spirit will bear witness with our spirit. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost will let you know you paid it. You Amen. dealt with it. Amen. But it also takes a sacrifice to get sanctified. In order to truly, truly get Bible sanctified, you're going to get back on that altar. And all you hope or dream to be, all your desires, all your affection for this world, Lord, I'm done. I'm done, Lord. I'm done. I'm done. There will be no more fight between me and you when it comes to your will. I'm done, Lord. A lot of times, folk are fighting. The this, the, the. Like you said in seventh chapter, back to Pentecost. Back to, Lord, I'm done. Lord, I'm done. Every dream I got is yours. Everything that I want to be, it don't matter. I'm done. Lord, burn me up, my ways, my thought, my pride. I ain't talking about sin. I dealt with sin. I'm just talking about me. Lord, burn me up. I'm done. I'm finished, Lord. I don't care. I don't care. I don't want the Bible said crucify the affections. Lord, I don't want to be affectionate about nothing but you. It don't matter. No hobby, no drink, no nothing. I'm not affectionate about burning up every affection on God. Lord, may it all be in you. Lord, I don't want this experience to be drudgery. I don't want what you call me to do. You don't have to fight. I'm done, Lord. Lord, burn me up every hope I got. Burn it. Every dream. Burn it. I don't care about nothing but the perfect will of God being done in my life. Amen. Amen. Lord, will you burn my ways of my faith? I don't want none of me when people do me wrong. Yes, it may hurt, but I don't want me to be here because I'll fight them back. I'll hold them for five years. Lord, I want to have something down in me that helps me to understand that it was a spirit that drove that person. I'm going to leave them alone. I can look at a person that done me wrong and still smile and shake their hand. I don't hold nobody. I ain't got no enemies nowhere. Yes, some folk have done me wrong, but I ain't got no and I ain't talking you out at home. I why? Because I have been crucified. Paul said, for I am crucified. Nevertheless, I live, but yet not I, my God, but the will of God. Yeah. But it takes a sacrifice. It takes a sacrifice that's almost gone out the land today. People want to be saved, but to go all the way to the second room, it took a sacrifice. Blood on the second altar. Also denoted consecration. And that was talking about a soul out. Sold out life as well. As we go through the close, verse number 11. So these attributes, the lion, the eagle, the man, and the calf, was needed and will be needed. And as long as we have it, we can be victorious through these end times. Now let us look at the result of having these. Verse number 11. Thus were their faces... And their wings were stretched upward. Uh huh. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, 
and two covered their body. Mm -hmm. And they went every one straight forward, uh -huh. whither the Spirit was to go. My Lord. They went. Yes. And they turned not when they went. My, my. As for the likeness of the living creatures, Come on, brother. their appearance yes. was like burning coals of fire. My Lord. And like the appearance of lamp. Uh huh. It went up <coughs> and down among the living creatures. Uh huh. And the fire was bright. My Lord. And out of the fire went forth light. My Lord. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of light. Praise the Lord. Let us look into some of these attributes. We won't be able to get through all of them. But we wanted to see the glory that followed verse number 10, where it spoke about the four living creatures. What followed them was verse number 11. It said, Thus were their faces. Amen. And their wings were stretched over. Thank God when you have the experience of the four living creatures. Amen. It speaks about their wings stretching upward. There were six, two of them stretching upward. And the Apostle Paul, he actually spoke of this. Praise the Lord. He spoke of this, these wings stretching upward. It was talking about extending to God. Here he said, oh, that I may know him. My Lord. My Lord, wings stretching upward. He told John, come up higher. We, the, the four living creatures are always uh, an element of them are always contending for the faith yeah. that was once delivered into the saints. Man. They're always going after more of God. They're always, you ever see a saint that always want more? Come on, listen. I, want, I know that God's better when we pray, but we pray four times. I want to get enough power that I only got to pray once. My Lord, you can just sense them. Oh, I want to dig deeper in the scripture. I want to, a God was dealing with me lately, talking about my children. I said, Lord, help me to pray with them more. Help me to have devotion with them more. Wings stretching upward. I don't ever want to get to a point where I'm content with where I'm at. I always want to go high. And the four living creatures, those that got these attributes, you will sense they are never content. Where they're at, but they'll always stretch for more. Even if you say, Well, Brother Lee, what about when we get older? Well, let me tell you about a man. I believe his name was Caleb. My God, when he got older, amen. Amen. When he got older, amen. And Joshua, amen. When these brothers get older, they would say things like, uh, uh, Let me relax now. I made it. I've done this. I'm going to sit back and drink some lemonade. No, they would still, when everybody around them said, It's time for lemonade. It's time to get your feet massaged. It's time for you to sit back and let somebody. No, no, no. No, something down in the four living creatures will call them and say, Lord, I understand. Amen. Four score, I'm past. But Lord, Hello. give me one more mountain. I don't want the rocking chair yet. Lord, give me one more. I don't want to sit back. Lord, I still got some fight down in me. Lord, I still want to swing some more. I may be 55, but don't put me aside, young folk. I still got some fight down in me. I may be 65. Church, don't go beyond me. Amen. I still got something down in my soul. I still want to do some more. My resting shall be over there. Amen. So here it said they had two wings that were stretched up where you will see this always. <laughs> always. You study out any of the saints of the four living creatures that had these attributes about them. They will always be fighting. You can find them on a deathbed still fighting, trying to get the nurses saved, trying to get whoever's around them saved, trying to get their in-laws saved, trying to get this, that, and the other. They'll be preaching on their way out. The angels are coming. You better get saved so you can go with me. Amen. they just fighting all the way in. they going to go through the gates. Amen. Just swinging on people. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. My God, don't swing on me. Amen. But Lord, I had a fight down in my soul. I was always contending for more. And that's one of the challenges that you look for when you're talking about fellowship. Look for those wings stretched up. Don't just look at what you see. But look and see what are they contending for. Everybody's contending for something. Are they contending to be accepted or beneath standards? Are they contending for less? Or they, do you see the wings stretched up? Can you sense, my God, they're going after some? Because when you're fellowshipping, you're actually connecting with people that is endeavoring to lift you up. Amen, my Lord, we find enough spirits out in the world to be pouring out. I say, oh my God, if stay neutral, I can have my devotion. We can actually have a church among us if we want to just stay where we're at. Amen. And just we can just encourage each other. But when you talk about real now, you have to endeavor because we got to go back out and do work for God. That's to go out and endeavor, work with people, this, that, and the other. But when you talk about real Bible fellowship, you should see their wings stretched upward just like yours. You should sense them driving for more. You ain't got to sit through a sermon and wonder, are they taking shots at me for the way I'm standing? Or that you got to you, you leave their drained. You leave it not wondering, hold on, what, what's going on? Are you, are you saying that uh, this don't matter and this don't matter? Then what do matter? Oh, God. 
Wow. Are your wings stretched upwards at all? Everything matters, my God, at this time we live in. We don't want to give up. I love that song. No ground. Give it up. No ground. Amen. Everything matters. But that's that wing, those real attributes of the saints. When you see it, you're going to see them with wings stretched up. Amen. 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 Also, tell me what the other wings did. Come on and read it. Come on. Thus were their faces, uh -huh. and their wings were stretched up. Uh -huh. Two wings of everyone uh -huh. were joined one to another. My Lord, so the wings of my were joined one to another, representing my God, the joining there. The Bible speaks in Ephesians, it said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. Amen. In the bond of peace. So here we see them, amen, endeavoring to keep the unity, working close, in saving ranks, do bravely fight, looking for those that they can fight with together. You can sense those that are truly, amen, with these attributes. You'll see, my God, a unity about them. They're not about this, that, and the other. I'm on this side. I'm on no, man. We all together with this thing going after God. Amen. I'm not allowing you to get between me. This, this person. No, no, no. No, 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 no. We're going forward. So they had these wings that were all straight. They were unified with each other. Wings represent unity. Unity represents unified with the word of God. Amen. Unified with the standards of the church. Unified, my God, with the message. My God, you know what I mean? Just unit. The unit, the Bible speaks about the uh, uh, the, uh, the bread. It was talking about unbroken, unleavened. And they came and gave each piece talking about the um, the uh, the uh, Lord's Supper, the sacraments of the church, the ordinances. Brother F.C. Smith, I believe it was F.C. Smith, we were studying the sacraments and the ordinances, and he was talking about that loaf was one, and they would break it apart and each get a piece. And he was talking about that oneness. And he broke that unity down like I'd never seen it. And he was talking about unity. I'm always thinking unity all together. He said unity is really together with the saints. Together with the word of God. Unified with the spirit of God. Unified. And he broke all these elements down. So here they had wings that were entwined all together. And savory ranks do bravely fight. And the last part of that wings, it said, and the two covered their bodies. The Bible speaks about the body being covered, the flesh. And it talked about a flesh that needs to be crucified. So the flesh that needs to be crucified was crucified. But then it talks about a flesh that needs to be kept under. Paul said, I keep under my body. So here he's, I crucify what needs to be crucified. And I keep under what I need to keep under. Uh, I'm not going to give. Be careful with feeding the flesh because it'll create wars in other areas. If I ever see a minister and he's trying to build up a church or whatever and he's making a lot of allowances to the flesh, it's going to create a problem somewhere because you, you feed the flesh, you want to mess on your hands. You keep feeding the flesh, it's at, eventually it's going to nullify almost every standard. Because I, 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 I'm not going to suffer if I ain't got to. Why am I going to suffer if I, if I ain't got to? I ain't going to suffer if I ain't got to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I got to do. But here, the redeemed, it talks about covering. And therefore, I'm crucifying what needs to be crucified. But I'm also keeping up under. Unless why a priest tell us. The devil tell you, and the devil don't want you to fast. Yeah, keep that flesh under. The devil don't want you to pray. You tired? Man, listen. And here my son is in the prime of his life. Energy can run from this and the other. From the time I, we got out of work from about 4.30, four, or he had a school about 4.30, we made two stops. One, he had to stop him office for a while, and two at home. Both times went straight to sleep. Listen, we're living in a tiring age. And you know why? Because your mind is almost always working. You be on your phone in your bed, and you probably almost fall asleep with it. Let me just check my phone one more time. <laughs> you wake up, your mind is working. <laughs> 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 We used to wait for uh, the paper to come, but now www.yahoocnn.com. Ooh, what's going on? Oh, child, did you see? We tired because we're working so hard. But to keep that flesh under, you tell yourself, go to bed. Yeah. You know when the hardest thing in the world is go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> go to bed. Yeah. Even, it's hard even telling your children now. Back in the day, their children went to bed and said, try that now. Put your whole house to bed while everybody still got a little bit of energy. 
Oh, you gonna be crying out oh, you miss the leap, man. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> so here they have the flesh as well. Alright, keep reading. Keep reading verse 12. We almost done. Come on, verse 12. And they went everyone straight forward. And they went everyone straight forward. Thank the Lord. They went straight forward. They weren't going side to side. They went straight forward. Amen. They walked. When you got these attributes, you will go straight forward. Amen. The Bible said over Isaiah, he said, there is a, a way, a holy way. Amen. And this uh, the wayfarer man shall not err therein. There shall be a highway there and a way. Thank God. A holy way, thank God. So here it said they went straight forward. So they were going forward. Straight, a pure, and a holy way. Undefiled. No compromising, but a straight and a forward way. Come on and read. They want everyone straight forward. They want everyone straight forward. Thank God for straight saints. Come on and read. With what the shady? Spirit. My God. When you got these attributes, you ain't shady. I'm going to show you at the end how beautiful it is. But you ain't Ain't it a blessing not to be a shady saint? Oh, it's easy to be a shady saint today because you got all this internet and stuff. You can call yourself a saint of God and you'll be watching rated, uh, you're watching all types of foolishness. How, what, 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 what education was that? How did that enlighten you? How did that draw you closer to God? You know, all the tests that the saints give stuff online. Will it take me closer to God? Does it defile any of the Ten Commandments? Is it a time waster? Is it? My God, you're going to be to God for real. You don't got time for it, but I'm going to Let me not to preach the standard too high. But, 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 but anyway, amen, yeah, but straightforward. Hey, amen. Come on and read. We're almost done. Read. And they want everyone straight forward. They want everyone straight forward. Whither the Spirit was to go, the Bible said, walk in the Spirit. They went. They led by the Spirit. Isn't that powerful? These redeemed of all ages, these attributes, they were led by the Spirit. You're talking about some power. Saints led by the Spirit. I've even seen some saints that wouldn't only really talk too much because they want the Spirit to lead them. Or you, now I'm not talking about being friendly, but you may ask them something. Maybe say, let me pray for let me get that some thought. I just don't want to just say, they wouldn't make quick decisions. Oh, you, you got the off? Let me, let me, let me pray. I just want the Spirit to lead. So here it says, they went wherever the Spirit would lead them. Powerful saints. Wherever the Spirit would lead them, they went. Come on and read. And they turned not when they went. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it said, be steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding. It said here they turn not. My God, saints. All you gotta ever do is, uh, is read about the apostasy, the shower, and stuff like this. They turn and with stick fast. Rock solid. These saints of old, these attributes they had, this will cause you to be steadfast. You may not run fast as a so and so, but you steadfast. What was that? I asked the saint when we went out to eat after I got saved up the first month. I said, brother, I've been, grew up in the church of God, congregation. I've seen people come and go. I've even seen some that are still here, and they were on fire. But now, they ain't. It was a really sad situation that happened some time ago. My children were looking at somebody's phone, and when they were looking at the phone, they saw some pictures. And one of the smaller ones said, they not said what? What they were, got? they that, they, and it was like, I asked the brother, I said, brother, I don't ever want it to be said by the help of God, but the same thing to say. Now, I may not jump as high as brother so-and-so, do this like brother, sister, so-and-so, run his back. I said, but I don't ever want it to be said that I remember when Brother Lee was on fire. Or I remember when he was encouraging. I remember when it wasn't about the things of this world. He wore the world as a loose garment. You didn't even know what he did. He wouldn't even take it up. But now his whole conversation has changed. He, he come to church there. Brother Lee he come to church there. And let me just tell you this. If somebody ever got to ask you, if somebody... I, Get at, is so and so still saved? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, help! Oh, I don't ever want you to ever have to say, hey, but I ain't seen them and I don't know what. Because saints love you. They're never going to wish or hope the worst. They're going to always take you. So they'll ask questions like that. But I ain't seen them in so long and they just so different. And like they, 
But it said they were steadfast. You got these attributes, you can be steadfast. You may not run like brother, but you, you, you're steadfast though. I may take baby steps, but I'm steadfast. Unmovable. Always about it. I'm always a little further than you saw me last. Always a little bit Always. And let me just say this. You can have a failure. But you can so get before God that you can restore your steadfastness. Things can happen. My God, know what? This has happened. But what gets me is when something happens to somebody and they get reclaimed, but they don't reclaim their steadfastness. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Did you perceive that? Listen to me, saints. Stuff can happen. We'll never want to preach the gospel to say stuff can't happen. Mm -hmm. It don't have to happen. It shouldn't happen. The grace of God is there so it don't happen, but it can happen. And if it happened, the Bible says we have an advocate. He will deal with your soul. He will convict you. He will be there with mercy. And he will implore you to come back home to get it situated. But if it does get situated, don't rush and don't settle for being reclaimed. Be reclaimed, but come back to the most high. Come back to the steadfast that you had before. My Lord, my Lord. It's like here you are, you messed up on your companion. Okay, you messed up, but now you're going to ask forgiveness and come back. Now you don't bond with them no more. You don't talk to them no more. You don't spend time no more. You don't bring them a little gift. You don't write them a little stuff. You don't bring them home a rose a child. No, all that's over what? If it happened, it happened. But deal with it. Get the root of it out. Deal with it. Confess it. Get delivered. Just forgiveness. Just be restored. But come back to the steadfastness that you once had. Come back for where you were at before. That's where apostasy comes in. Preachers of restaurant have a failure. Something happened, there's te a test or whatever, and they'll fail. Instead of acknowledging it and saying, Lord, my faith wasn't where it should be. Lord, please help me. Lord, get me back to where it will be. You will end up redefining your steadfastness. Come back to a lesser level and be offended when everybody preached what you used to shout over. So here, it said that they were steadfast. They went forward. Come on and keep reading. And they went everyone straight forward. Uh -huh. Whether the spirit was to go, Come on. they went. Come on. And they turned not Come on. when they went. Read. As for the likeness of the living creature, uh -huh. their appearance was like burning I'm coals sorry. of fire. As we close, Revelation 4, last scripture. Back to our text. Revelation 4, 8. As we close the series, the attributes of the redeemed, the four living creatures, the lion, the eagle, the man, and the calf, having these attributes will enable us to withstand any condition that we'll face, any trial that we'll go through, any situation that we will embark upon as the close of time comes upon us all. The last scripture we'll read is Revelation 4, verse number 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. Uh, I'm talking about the wings we just went over. Same thing. Read. And they were full of eyes within. We already went over the wings and we just talked about that. But it says here they were full of eyes within. The beautiful thing about the four living creatures, the redeemed of all ages, those with these attributes, it said they had full of eyes within. The Bible speaks and it says over in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves. Those that have these attributes aren't looking at the person next to them, aren't looking at sister so-and-so funny, aren't looking at brother so-and-so and his children, but they're full of eyes within. They actually, uh, uh, they, they search me, Lord. There's a humility there, a genuineness there, and an honesty there, because there's something that you can go through in life that somebody may pat you on the back over, but the spear will check you on it. So you're actually full of eyes within. Lord, help me. And see, this represents humility. Sometimes, you, because somebody pats you on the back, you think you're better, you think you're good. But full of eyes within is the Lord, I'm examining myself. Amen. I'm here. I never rose above a message. Lord, I'm examining myself. Lord, please help me. Was that an attitude? Was that an attitude? Lord, how did I deal with that? Lord, sister so-and-so, somebody I met was talking yesterday, and she said that their, their, their parents left a huge, huge amount of... Uh, uh, um, Re, uh, resources and things, money, lands, when they died. Two of the brothers got into it. I don't know if they're the only two children, but two of the brothers got into it. One of them built a prominent golf course in the community. Well, the other one didn't feel that it should be used as a, it's just a dispute happened. 
it got so deep that they don't even talk anymore. And the mother said something, the wife of the one, she said, Lee, I've forgiven her, but I don't ever want men to do it. And I said, you know what? That's a fine line. But I'm going to leave that to you and God. Because sometimes some people can do you so wrong and they do you, cut you so deep that honestly, and it might have violated money or, or, or your purity or uh, sexually, and you may, I honestly ask God to forgive me, but what you did was so heavy, I really am avoiding your company. And I'm not saying that that's wrong, but it's a fine line by really you just didn't get it all out. And I really don't want nothing else to do with you because of what you did. It has nothing to do with me trusting you again or this, that, and the other. But full of eyes within will allow you, saints, to come to those times to where you actually can separate the bone from the marrow. You can actually see, Lord, what about that? How did I deal with that? And you've got to be redeemed by Victoria because they got full of eyes within. We live in a tough time. It's going to be situations that you got to make the judgment call. Not the ministry, not the gospel. It's the, do I involve myself? You're at work. And here this is. Do I, we're doing this. Do I go here? I've been on trips and conferences and this, that, and the other. And they went and they said, and I had to judge it. And it was like this place, but it was a bar, but it did serve food. And it was it. So I'm like, Lord, do I go? And the people in here. And so I said, you know what? I did feel, no, uh, okay, I feel there's a prop thing that's okay because we are covering the tomorrow's presentation. So I went, and then the Holy Ghost allowed it. But at some point when we got done, and they shifted and began to order drinks. And then began, he just immediately quick, get a cab. Full of eyes. Y'all couldn't judge that. Y'all wouldn't know nothing. It's straight in the boat. You tell me. There ain't, no, ain't no scripture in the Bible said nothing. There's principles there. But I had to decide. You've been raising children. Here you are. You don't want to hold back stuff from them. But you don't want to involve yourself in something that is really compromising something. Conviction that God is showing you. So here you saying that I don't want to hold you back because I want you to. I can't do that. No, 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 no. We don't go there. But we got we good. But I can't compromise something just to say this. That's the Bible ain't the altar of confusion. So I got to figure out. Full of eyes within. I got to work. The Bible said work out your salvation. You got to work this thing out. You got to get before God and say, now do I take this retirement? With this retirement, all I gotta do is fill this clause out. You are selling the house. Do I sell it with this and do I claim this? You fill out your taxes. You gotta be full of eyes within in order to make it with victory all here. It's